Okay, we're going to look at that sequence of squares and sequence of odd numbers and the relationship between them and just kind of assume that we don't understand it and approach the process of understanding it from that growth mindset point of view. So the very first thing we want to do is say to ourselves things like, I don't understand this yet, instead of saying, I'll never understand this. So that's the first thing. So we just put that yet on the end of things. That will kind of point us in the right direction. Okay, let's go back to the sequence of odd numbers here. Most people don't have much trouble getting the first number uh, after five. So that would be seven, that would be nine, so on and so forth. But if you didn't, you could look at it and say, well, what is going on here? These differ by two, these differ by two. Let's write that down. So I'm going to say three subtract one is two, five subtract three is two, 7 subtract 5 is 2, 9 subtract 7 is 2, and so if I continued that pattern, I know that I'd add 2 to 9 to get the next number. So uh, I'm just playing around with this a little bit. I'm actively involved in it. I want to be writing things down. We're not going to really understand this until we can write it down ourselves from scratch. So the part of the growth mindset is that you're take a problem you're struggling with and become actively involved with it. And one of the things you want to be sure you're doing is writing things down. Okay, so let's look at the next sequence, 1, 4, 9, 16 sequence of squares. Let's suppose you just can't see anything there to do. So I'm going to say, well, let's do what I did up here and subtract. 4 subtract 1 is 3. Then I have 9 subtract 4 is 5. Oh, that's interesting. And then 16 subtract 9 is going to be 7. So I don't get the same number with each of these differences, but I end up with this sequence of odd numbers right here. So that tells me if I wanted to get the next number here, all I have to do is add the next odd number, which is 9, to 16 to get me 25. Okay, so that's one way to look at it. Now, suppose you say to yourself, well, I wouldn't have thought of that myself. Well, I didn't either. I saw it from somebody else. So now you've seen it, so you have another tool in your toolbox to work with sequences. Look at the differences between the terms. This one here turns out to be really interesting. It actually gets us the next number in the sequence. But now suppose you looked at this differently and you said, well, this, I see this is 2 times 2. Okay, that's great. And then 9 is 3 times 3. 16 is 4 times 4. So if you continued that pattern, then you'd say, well, the next number is going to be 5 times 5, which is 25. So you get it there again. What if you back up to the 1? Does that fit into this? Well, sure, because 1 is also 1 times 1. So there's another way to look at that sequence as far as the same number times itself. Let's suppose you know exponents. Then you might say to yourself, well, this looks like 2 to the second power. 9 looks like 3 to the second power. 16 is 4 to the second power. So if I continue that pattern, this would be 5 to the second power, which of course is 25. And then if I backed up down this way, just to make sure that fits in, well, 1 is 1 to the second power. So I could look at it like that. Okay, so suppose you're more, uh, you're uh, involved in art or design, things like that, and you see this word square and it brings up something geometric to you. So you look at the four and you see the square right here. So you say, well, what, what if I drew a square? Where would I get the four out of that? Well, if I just divide these in half, I have four little squares. So the total number of squares there is four, and there's two on that side and two on that side. Well, let's go to the nine. Well, I can just kind of continue that pattern and say that I can draw a big square that has nine little squares in it, and then that side's three and that side's three. So I go to the next one, and I would have four on each side and get 16. So four and four. How about if I back up this way, what about one? Well, that would just be one little square. Each side is one, and the total number of squares is one. 
So you might be more artistically inclined and think of this in a geometric way. Well, if you do that, you can see that the next step right here would be a, a, a square with 25 little squares in it, five on each side. Now, let me show you something else I kind of like with this. Let's look at that first little square, that one right there. I see it again right here and right here and right here, right? Now, what if I go to these three squares that I added on? How many squares did I have to add on there to that first one to end up with four? Well, I had to add on three of them. Here they are again, right there, and here they are again right here. Okay, now I go to the next square. How many do I have to add on to this little square? How many of these squares to end up with nine? Look what happens. One, two, three, four, five. So I have to add on five to get that nine. I've got the relationship between the sequence of squares and the sequence of odd numbers geometrically. One plus three plus five is nine. Let's try the next one. Here's my one, two, three, four, five. Now, how many do I have to add on to this little group of squares here to end up with 16? Well, I have to add on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 gives me the 16 squares. There's the relationship. Okay, so I'm just actively involved in trying to figure this out. It's messy. That's what happens. You're writing things down. Some things will work, some things won't. But you can see, as I write all these things down, my understanding of what's going on here with these sequences is increasing. So with the growth mindset, you can trust that if you're actively involved in struggling with this problem, you'll be making more intellectual progress and maybe even getting smarter. Okay, let's go to our sequence right here or our relationship that we have and see if we can figure that out. I would say the very first thing to do, if you, have, if you have no idea how to start, just copy it down. So you'd say, well, look, he's starting with one equals one. Okay, the next line, he has one plus three is equal to four. Well, is that true? Sure, three plus one is four. The next line, he says, well, that's one plus three plus five. Well, what's that? Five and three is eight and one is nine. Okay, so let me look back here to my sequences that I have and I see, well, one plus three is four. So if I add these two odd numbers, I get four, which is the second square. Now, one plus three plus five. Okay, if I add one plus three plus five, I end up with nine, that's that square. So I would say, just by looking at that, if I said one plus three plus five plus seven must be, well, I can add it up if I want, or I can look up here and say, well, if I add the first four odd numbers, if this pattern continues, I must get 16. And sure enough, it is 16 and you can add it up. Then you can just continue this and say, well, I don't even have to add the next five odd numbers. I know when I do, it's gonna be the fifth term in that sequence of squares, which is 25. So there's a kind of an example of how you go about struggling with the problem according to the growth mindset. You sort of look forward to it. You're actively involved in it. You're writing things down. Yes, it's messy, but as I make this mess right here, I'm getting smarter and I'm understanding the sequence of odd numbers, the sequence of squares, and the relationship better and better. Now, when you really understand this is when you get to the point where you can take this and explain it to somebody that's never seen it before. And of course, you would do that with a paper and pencil or pen. So anyways, there's a look at the growth mindset, an example of how it might look if you were actually using it.